Welcome. Today I'm going to show you how you can export the Unity 3D Euphoria app that we have developed in the previous workshop and get it on your iOS mobile device. I'm here in the parking lot behind our building and in the adjacent street and I'm going to look at the image targets in the real world that we used uh, in the last workshop. If you remember, then we just used them as printouts from the digital file, from the photos that I took uh, in these uh, real world places. But today I wanted to show you how uh, things look actually quite different when you see your image targets in the real world and when they become augmented with the 3D content. Okay, so I'm back in the lab and I brought both my iPad and my computer and now I just have to connect both of these together and show you how you can upload your Unity 3D app onto your mobile device. So let's get ready and switch into the screen view. Okay, so the first thing we have to do here is to open the Unity AR workshop that we have been working on in the first workshop. If you would like to review that workshop, uh, the link to it uh, can be found in the comments section below this video. So I just go to Unity 3D AR um, in here, do my assets, and then in the assets I actually have my scene, Unity 3D AR Corn, that I can load by simply double clicking on it. So this gets us into Unity, and then if I click on that scene it should get us into the project as we have left it off in the uh, last workshop. Okay, so today we would like to export this application uh, to an iOS device. I have my iPad connected um, to the computer and uh, in Unity we don't really need to do too many things for that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to navigate to file and then say uh, build settings. And then uh, in here we need to switch the platform from the default PC, Mac and Linux standalone platform to an iOS platform. And so uh, when I click on iOS, I should be able to actually switch the platform down below with this button here. If for a reason, um, like in my case, you can't use this button, that means that there is no iOS module installed with your application. So when you download Unity at the beginning, you have a few choices of extra modules that you can download and install with the software. Uh, one of them is the iOS module. Um, if you haven't downloaded that when you downloaded the original Unity package, when you installed Unity for the first time on your machine, then this module is missing. And so in my case, it is missing too. Uh, you can install it later on, and this is what I'm going to show you. Um, you just have to click on the open download page and then go to the website where you can download it from. As you can see here, um, it is actually quite a big package. So I'll let it download, and once it is in my downloads folder, I will show you how you can install it. So the Unity iOS module has finished downloading and I can now simply go into my downloads folder and then open this package. All right, start the install and then basically follow all of the steps necessary to install this software. All right, so the software has installed. I click close, move, to, uh, move the installer to the trash. And uh, then let's go back into Unity. And even though I've installed the software, you see that there is no iOS that can be found still. What I have to do is I have to restart the software and then we will be able to use that module. So I'll quickly do that. So I'm back in Unity. After I've installed the software, restarted uh, Unity, and with the iOS module installed this time, I go to Build Settings again, File, Build Settings, switch to the iOS system, hit the Switch Platform button, and you see that now we need to uh, say no thanks again because we have this API 
uh, warning that pops up. We need to import some assets that have been installed with the iOS module. And you can see now that we have uh, a couple more uh, options that show up under the iOS uh, module description here. We also need, as it says here, Xcode to run. I'll uh, basically have Xcode installed because Xcode will actually help us transferring the package, the app that we have developed in Unity um, onto the, the mobile device. So we can also check a few player settings in here. So it's always good to double check. And um, if we go to the right-hand side, look in our uh, inspector, then we see that there are certain kind of settings for the iOS system. Uh, usually by default, they're all okay and you don't really have to change uh, too much in here. There's just a, a couple of few little things. So I just um, wanted to point those out to you guys as we go uh, through these settings. Um, you could set the orientation on your device, but by default it auto-rotates, so these are all good things to have. Um, uh, this is kind of interesting if you go to the icon um, selection here. You could override the default icons that the uh, Unity uh, software gives you for this app, and you can bring in your own icons uh, at specific resolutions. These are basically for specific iOS devices, iPhones, certain generations of iPhones, iPads, certain generations of that iPad Pro, and so forth. And so you could actually import as an asset these um, icons that then uh, can be used to start up the application or find the application on your um, um, iPad screen. Uh, we, uh, for in the interest of time, we don't do that in this workshop, so we just leave everything as it is. If you have the pro version of Unity, uh, you can also have a custom splash image that you can bring into the software as an asset as well. And I will actually link in the comment section of this video tutorial to a Unity 3D link that explains the size requirements uh, for this splash image if anybody is interested in doing that. We also don't change anything here, so we will have the um, default Unity 3D splash screen that is uh, starting up. We don't really need to change anything in the debugging settings, but we do need to go into the other settings. And uh, there's just uh, two little things right here. I um, want to extend this out just a little bit uh, that we have to change. The first thing is the bundle identifier. And this is a kind of a, a unique um, ID for your uh, software application that you're developing. Um, it's in the uh, reverse. Uh, order of a, a website address, for example, where you would start out with uh, com for your company or commercial application, uh, your company name, and then the name of your app. So in our case, what we can do is we can say this is com.fabwinkler, which is actually my developer name um, that I chose on the Apple developer website, and then dot um, unity 3DAR as the actual name of the app. We don't want to automatically sign in because this is something um, that we will later on do in Xcode. Um, unless you have um, an iOS provisioning profile already, if you paid for um, uh, your developer status at Apple and you want to upload, for example, your um, app to the uh, iOS App Store, then uh, you can get to this by browsing for it here, or you can get the profile ID from the Apple developer website. Again, if you are um, a developer that has paid the $99 uh, annual subscription fee. We will actually do that uh, later on. We will actually sign in through Xcode to our uh, Apple developer um, portal to get uh, this information into our app uh, since we didn't subscribe to the uh, commercial uh, Apple developer status. So uh, make sure that under bundle identifier you have a unique bundle ID in here that consists of com dot and then whatever your uh, developer name is um, with Apple dot and then the name of your app and then also make sure that you uncheck the automatically sign button um, in the same section under identification here. So these are the only two things that we truly have to do in the inspector. And now what we can do is we can say build and run. Uh, the software asks us where do we want to save uh, this project to. It will basically generate some code that uh, Xcode will take over and Xcode will interpret and then push onto our iPhone. So we have to specify where this needs to go. 
uh, by default it will actually specify the folder that Unity created for our app and so I just call this uh, Unity 3D AR um, iOS hit save And this is now compiling the code from Unity and it should automatically open uh, Xcode for me. Again, if you don't have Xcode installed yet, now is a good uh, moment to download the software. It is free and you can get it from the Apple developer website through the App Store, the Apple App Store. The link for where to find it is in the comment section of this video. All right. So now we see that uh, Xcode already uh, tells us that something is going on there. So we click on it. And um, if you are starting Xcode for the first time, you need to enable uh, the developer mode for it. So just say, OK, I want to enable this on this machine. And uh, we need to, if the device is locked, like in this case, we need to unlock the device. So I think in my case, it just fell asleep again. So let's see if this will already take care of things here. Um, so I wake up my um, iPad and then log back in. Okay. And it has recognized it right here. Um, and uh, I already see on the left-hand side in my uh, project panel, um, the, the project that we have um, uh, imported into, um, into Xcode. And so what you can do is you can basically just simply uh, click on to the name of this project, which will bring up some of the properties and some of the settings um, of that project in the middle section of Xcode. We don't really uh, have to do any kind of programming in Xcode, just have to make sure that the uh, bundle identifier is correct and that we can actually sign this application with our uh, Apple developer signature. So it's basically coming from an authorized source and um, the iPad can basically understand it and then play it for us. So uh, remember how we unchecked the automatically uh, signing in option in Unity 3D. Now is actually the point where we have to check it again. So say yes, enable automatic. And uh, it didn't find an account. So this doesn't really matter because we can add an account you only have to do that once in the very beginning um, when you do your first project later on it should actually have all of this information so what we have to do right now we just have to add our account and basically sign in with our apple id and our password to create this account so i quickly do that here all right so here's my account um, i can basically click this away and you see that uh, it has automatically um, added some information here as well. The, the last thing we have to do now is we have to choose our team. And since we are individual developers, um, uh, most likely in this case, you just choose your own personal team that is based on the information that you have provided by becoming an Apple developer. So it would just be your username or your real name that you can see in this list. Choose this here. It creates a certificate uh, provisioning profile. This is this number that I was talking about before that we didn't have, uh, that uh, we could have also pasted into Unity if it had it before, but now it's been um, automatically being added for us. All right, and so the last thing we have to do is we just have to hit the playback button here, which should push the app onto the iPhone, and we can actually continue um, uh, testing it out on the iPhone, so I'll switch over to the iPhone view here in, in just a second if things go well. I'll click play. All right. Um, okay, I have to unlock my device again. Good. Upload it. Okay. All right, so if for whatever reason you get uh, an error message that it's still processing some files, you just have to wait until it's done doing that. It's doing this up here, processing symbol files. Um, sometimes takes a little moment. And then after it's done doing that, we can upload it. At the end, when it is done processing all of these files that are required, um, you can basically try again uploading. It is now successfully building and uh, transferring at the same time onto the iPhone. Now here's just one more uh, word about the uh, distribution of this AR app. 
So unfortunately, if you're not a developer who's paying the $99 a year to be an Apple developer, but if you're using their free developer service, you can only use your Unity 3D application on um, iOS devices that you have physically connected to your computer. You cannot upload your app to the Apple App Store, for example. All right, so we got a little uh, message here. Uh, yes, we would like to allow the keychain to access this. Um, the build succeeded and now I guess we're ready to switch over to the uh, iPhone view. Okay, so we are now in the iPad view. You already see that here is my Unity 3D AR app. Now, unfortunately, if you do this for the first time, you get this untrusted developer uh, warning message and you'll get a very similar message on the computer screen as well. So what you have to do is you just have to quickly go into the settings of your uh, iOS device and you have to um, allow this iOS device to trust you um, as the developer. So I quickly do that slide through the settings um, and then in here we need to go to the general tab that's already selected for us and then we go to device management and uh, click on Fab Winkler which is myself and trust myself that I did um, a good job developing this app and that we can actually run it on this device. So we say trust and uh, now we can go back to our app and start it. Yes, we would like to access our camera. And all right, here we already have the first image target with the augmented corn. It's the second image target. Um, remember this one is the one that doesn't do such a good job with the tracking, but nevertheless, actually looks fine even though we get some light reflections on here as well. So we can uh, switch back and forth and uh, this is how you would get your um, Unity 3D Euphoria app onto an iOS device.